This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on April the 11th, 2016. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's one o'clock and it's time to start. And uh, Brenda has buttonholed me right away <laughs> with uh, an issue that she had. Uh, I thought I explained it very well last week, but I'm going to you do did. it again. Yeah, you did. And we'll do it right off the bat, so it's right at the beginning, beginning of, the lesson, of yeah. the lesson, and it's easy to find. Um, Brenda's issue is that uh, she cannot find her Internet Explorer on the task bar anymore and as a matter of fact Edge is gone as well. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make these two disappear and I will show you how to get them back. Oops, not connected. Well, I was but I'm not now. Okay, so uh, I'm going to unpin this and I'm going to unpin this. Now, that's exactly what you're looking at. Yep. No, it's oh, gone. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what you can do is you can go to your search bar here, uh, to the Cortana search bar if you like. Cortana? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, if, if it's not there, then what you'll have, what you'll have to do is click on um, your Windows icon here. Yeah. Okay. Now, Microsoft Edge should be somewhere in this first block of uh, of things. If it's not, okay, you can do all programs. Uh, wait a minute here. All apps, I should say. And um, you'll just scroll down to um, under M, Microsoft Edge, okay, and you'll open it doesn't matter where it opens, just as so long as you can get it open. Okay, now here's, here's the trick part. You'll notice that the edge icon is now on the task, task bar. Okay, what you can do is you can come down to this and right click on it and it will say, it will give you as part of the menu, pin to task bar. So if you click on that, if you click on pin to task bar, now it will stay in the taskbar. If you close off, there you go. There is Microsoft Edge. Now the same thing holds true for Internet Explorer. Uh, it might take a little bit to find it um, in, this, in this way, but we'll go to All Apps and we'll see where it is. Um, might be under Microsoft, no. Where is it? Where is it? If you don't have your Cortana Finder. You sure you don't have that little search bar right there? Beside the... Uh... Yeah, I got that. Okay, well this, then that's the way to find Internet Explorer. You just click inside it and type internet yeah internet e it comes right up okay now you here again you want to open it and because it's now open I can right click on its icon which is in the taskbar and I can pin it to the taskbar so right click and there pin to taskbar and when I close it, it will stay there. Oh, okay. Okay? Right. 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 Now, <laughs> let's see if we can get our no Wi-Fi networks found. Oh, brother. Why is that? It's here. <laughs> it's not your computer, I can tell you. <laughs> so, he's here. 
Yeah, why is that? Well, I don't know what happened, folks, but we don't have internet today, so we'll have to talk about local things on the computer. <laughs> I just hate that. <laughs> well, there are, there are plenty of local things that we can talk about. Um, the first, I guess the first thing that we can we could talk about locally is I know we've we've gone through these before and how to make documents and such uh, but I think what I'd better do is is uh, I'm going to run through the process of creating and saving a document again because it's it is important to do um, whether you're doing it in notepad or whether you're doing it in, in Microsoft Word the idea is the same that you have to um, you have to be able to create a document, save it, and save it where you can find it. Okay, That's the biggest part, is saving it where you can find it. The computer wants to, to help you out. It wants to be helpful. And so it may just go ahead and save it to some place that it likes. You've never been there before. <laughs> so your document goes in there. You've never been there before. How are you going to find it? Especially if you don't know its name. That's Cortana. Uh, you could do that too. So let's start off um, with uh, with a notepad. We'll open it up. There's our notepad desktop app. And we'll open it up. Now as I said before, the first thing that you want to do if you are going to make something in notepad or any other um, document creating software is once you've got it open then the first thing to do is to save it. The first thing to do is to save it. Now uh, in this case uh, I'm going to say that I want to use this notepad uh, as a quick reminder uh, for um, when I should service my car. So I'll put a month and a day in to, to send my car in for service. So let's just do that. Let's save this. Save as. We've got no document um, that does this, that, that, that uh, looks at my, um, when I want to send my car in for service. So it's brand new, so we have to do a save as. And we're going to give it a name. Um, and I'll give it the name of car service, car service. And now um, the computer is telling me it wants to save this in documents. Well that's okay, that's where I want it to go. <coughs> but we can change that if you like. I can, <coughs> excuse me, I can save this to the desktop here. I can save it to the desktop I can save it in documents or wherever I want, music, pictures, or I can make a new uh, folder in documents for car service and save it there. We can do that after we've saved it as well. So for the, for the time being, let's save it. It's called car service and now it's saved. And if we look under the documents folder, there should be a text document right here called carservice.txt. Okay, so it's there. Anytime we want to go and get it, we can go and get it. I can close that document now and go back and open it um, now that I've got it saved. But let's give it let's give it some text. Um, so we're going to send the car in uh, June 30th. Uh, break service. Break service. Okay, so there's what I want to do with it. At this um, at this point, I can click on File, and I don't have to do Save As. I've I've already got this document saved as a name, so now I just want to save the changes to the text. That's all we're doing now. 
is saving changes to the text. And if I do this again tomorrow or a month from now, I will just be saving changes to the text. So we'll do save and we'll do close. Now let's go back there and see what we have in fact done. So into my documents folder and there is carservice.txt and when I open it up there's the text I've put in and it will save that forever okay or until I uh, tell the computer I don't need this anymore and I delete it. By the way if you do go ahead and delete something um, and, you dis and you discover right away that you should not have done that, you can go to your uh, recycle bin folder right down here on, on mine, in this case mine, open it up and you will find all of the recent things that you've sent to the recycle bin. And to get them back all you have to do is uh, highlight the document and then um, there, should, there should be an entry here for restore the selected items and there it is right there. So if I was to click on that right now it would put that desktop any back on the desktop. But I don't need it because I already got one. So, but that's how you, do, you recover from an accidental deletion and it's easy to do and let me show you why. Because if you right click on this car service thing and let's say you want to rename it to something else, look what rename is right next to. Delete. It's real easy to move your mouse over that delete and delete. Now you would think that, well, I'm done now, I have to recreate. Well, you can go, if you've not fiddled with the settings on your, on your recycle bin, the recycle bin is set to receive deleted items and hang on to them until you tell them to go away permanently. You can fiddle with your recycle bin to say, if anything goes there, just make it go away right now, as soon as it gets there. Then you need a program to recover your recycle bin. That can be done. But look at this. It's, it's, I don't know why they did this, and, and it's been this way ever since Windows 3.1, that rename is right next to delete. You would think they would give delete its very own section in here so that you can't make a mistake. But over the last 20 years, they have not done that. Why? Why? It would be so easy to do. Who knows? Microsoft not thinking or maybe they understand that people hate change, but that's the way it is. Okay, so uh, I'm going to open this again. Um, now, we've create, we've, the first thing we did was uh, open a document creating software, Notepad, saved that open document with a name in a place where we can find it, okay, put in whatever um, documents that we want, whatever text that we want to save as a reminder or whatever. Now it comes to the time of, I don't want to have this document in my documents folder anymore. Go. Or a month later, you go and delete a bunch of stuff and un, you know you can't remember that you put stuff in there you wanted to keep. Yeah. So it's easy to do. All right. Um, let's go back to our uh, let's look at LibreOffice now for things that we might want to do there and the things that we're going <coughs> to excuse me do in LibreOffice are the three main things that we would do in Microsoft Office. Uh, create a document, create a spreadsheet, or create a presentation. And a presentation is just uh, another word for PowerPoint. If someone sends you a PowerPoint presentation in email, 
um, and you click on it and it shows you a bunch of really neat pictures. It's got music in the background, the text is coming in and out, flying all over the place. In LibreOffice, that's what will do that. Presentation. Because that's what presentation is. Um, let's start with um, Document Writer. And so it changed. It uh, just opened up to Document Writer here. Um, you will note that across the top of the document itself, the document writer itself, is a menu bar. It's a little bit more, uh, there's a lot, a lot more stuff in the menu bar than there is in Notepad, but a lot of the stuff in the menu bar is the same as Notepad. And for instance, under File, uh, you will find the Save As, uh, um, Save, uh, save a copy. Now, if you open a document and you make a change to it, now let us just say um, that you want to have two copies of the document, the original and, and the change, which is a good thing to do. When you open the document, the first thing you do is save a copy. And that save a copy will be named document name, copy one. It'll be up here, instead of untitled, it'll be document name, copy one. Now you're working in the copy of the document, not the original, the copy. And so, um, at that point, uh, once you've made your changes, I think all you really need to do is do save, and it will save the changes to document name copy one. Okay, and it'll close, you can close it. Now you've got two copies, one the original, one the changes. That's a good thing to have, especially when you're, if you're working with somebody uh, like your lawyer or some, something like that, sending documents back and forth. You want to be able to track the changes that you've made because believe me, he's tracking the changes he made. Okay. And it's the same with banks and any other um, institution. Um, when they get documents and they make changes to them, they track the changes. They, tr they have the original and the changed document. And for you, that's a good thing. Uh, do as they do. Um, the other thing that, that uh, um, LibreOffice has here under the edit function is uh, here again, uh, cut, copy, paste. Um, it has, it's a little bit more fancy in that. Um, um, but for your purposes, mostly uh, you're going to think about the undo, redo. And that is for something like if you put text in here, okay. It gives me the option, undo the typing. So if I click on that, it's going away for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> and so I can, there's still a little bit left, so I can undo typing again. Nope. Oh, well, too bad. But uh, that's uh, particularly useful if you, uh, if you format the text. If you change its size, change its color, change its position, you can go back to the edit, and if you don't like what you, what you just did, you can click on Edit Undo, and all of those changes as, uh, as a list. So you changed it to blue, then you changed its size, then you changed its position. There will be three places, uh, there will be three different undos that you can do. Undo position, undo uh, size, and undo color, and you will go backwards up the list rather than forwards down the list. Okay, Undo. It's really handy. Um, when you want to do, um, and you have all of these available to you in Notepad, um, under View, okay, there's a lot of things that you can see, but for the most part, what you want to look at 
uh, under view is the layout. Okay, is the layout of what you're doing. Um, I'm going to click on print layout, and so it's now showing me um, what the printer will see on the page. It's not what the printer will print on the page, it's what the printer will see. And so um, to, to look at this um, under um, print layout, it's it gives you a really good indication of exactly what your document is going to look like before print and after print. So this is um, before print and the other one will be after print. Um, now you've got a bunch of tools and stuff and tables and stuff here. Ignore that. The next thing you want is the window. Okay. If you click on the window it shows you the name of the document you're working with. And if you have two documents open, it will show you that, um, that you have untitled one or untitled two or document name or something like that. You, if you've got three documents open, it will throw, show you a list of three. So over at window, you can, um, if you need to open untitled document two, uh, you just go over to window, click on it, and it'll open. Okay, but it's in the background or it's it's down in the taskbars. It's somewhere that you can't see it. It'll just bring it right up to the for, to the front. Okay, that's a quick way to be moving between documents that you want to get items from and put them in the old one and put items in the new one into the old one and such like that. It also gives you the option to open a new window. So we'll click a new window and look at this. We've got untitled document one, document two. If we look in uh, under <coughs> windows, there it is. Untitled one, untitled one, page two. Okay. So now you can go back and forth between the two of them and um, without having to close and open and hunt around and stuff. It's all right there in front of you. So we're going to close that window. And here again we can do close window. And because I made little changes, it's going to ask me do I want to, want to save the changes. And I'm going to say don't save. And it's gone. Um, as far as spreadsheet goes and um, presentation software goes, if you want to use them, there are some things that they are really handy for, um, particularly uh, keeping running totals in, uh, in a calculation spreadsheet of what you're doing. Um, you can set them up to have a list of stuff and then across the top, the month. Okay, and then way over at the side, be behind the last month, you can tell it, keep a running total of what I've done every month for this item, this item, this item. Okay? And it will keep those totals for you. You change one, it changes everything. Uh, but to do that, there are plenty of YouTube videos on how to set up simple calculation spreadsheets. Um, and um, what they're really good for is things like tracking medications, okay? Tracking medications for you, for your husband, uh, for whoever you're looking after. You can put in sheets and sheets and sheets of, uh, and down at the bottom there will be a little tab saying my medications, hubby's medications, dog's medications, okay, whatever. And you can keep track of them that way. But l look at YouTube videos to set this stuff up. They are really, really easy. You can follow along, um, and they, uh, and in most cases, you will find them very, very useful. Um, where are we now? Okay, I'm not going to go into Microsoft Documents. Um, the one thing. Notice control panel and have all kinds of 
the settings to play with and everything. Yeah. And then we go to the start menu. Yeah. And we've got settings. Are they only for the apps or are they for everything? Because it seems to me you okay, when, the other and everything's screwing up. When you um, click on um, your um, Windows icon and you find the settings and um, entry and you click on that in fact all of these here are what you will find in control panel so it's exactly the same. yeah it's a it's a fast way to get to them if you know exactly where you're going okay yeah you're looking at two totally different sets of, in different yes. directions. Yes. Yeah. Well, where. yeah. But in fact, <laughs> in fact, yeah. all of these, all of these here are part of control panel. Okay. <laughs> so if you know control panel better than this settings thing, go to control panel. And, and for all of you, I'm pretty sure that you all know your control panel settings better than you do this. So they're not going to take control panel away from you. They may hide it a bit, but they're not going to take it away from you. Um, and I found that drilling down into these settings in, in, in this panel of settings, um, I get lost really, really easy. Well, this one, this one here, will, it'll show you all the apps you can individually turn everything yeah. off. Well, um, no, they're not. They are not. Um, as a for instance, um, let's go with uh, okay, system settings. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff in here you can uh, you can turn on and off. Right now, we're looking at the display. That was screwed up on mine. All yeah. Itself, I didn't touch it. Yeah. It was red writing there saying. And and I thought, there's something wrong with this. Yeah. <laughs> I fixed it. I don't know really how I fixed it. Yeah. But, I did. but um, <laughs> these are the display settings, and you can get to these by right clicking on the desktop. Okay. And it will give you display settings in the old format, or it may give you them in the new format. And you can also get the display settings from Control Panel, which will give, you, give them to you in the old format. It's which one do you understand better? Okay, and I can put these all on the desktop and just compare them? Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, the way to do it is here's the, uh, here's the control panel um, items right here. I believe it's the same way um, as you did in Windows 7. You go to personalize and then, uh, and then themes and then desktop icon settings and it tells you as you did in in the old way of doing it that you can check put a check mark against control panel on the desktop and it will show it there okay but you uh, you sort of have to drill down a little bit because look at this this personalization settings okay that was part of This settings, okay, well, let's go back here. Come on, go back, okay. It was part of personalization, okay. But if you didn't know that, you could hunt around for days and not see it. So control panel and sometimes right-clicking to get what you want is what you want. Yeah. Yeah, Bob, talking about original copy and duplicate copy, I, this is in iTunes, in my playlist. I brought, I purchased a song, it came in in whatever format. I did change the encoder, but I don't know what format. So I thought, I want to put an MP3 ver version on. So I right-clicked the song, created a, an MP3 version, yep. sent it over to the, my little MP3 player. Now I have two songs. Yeah. I wanted to delete the... MP3 version because I, I leave the iTunes song there, but delete the MP3 version. But it's telling me, eh, you you know, this song will also be deleted off. All yes, the that that's so true. I don't want to do that. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, it's no, it's no, you don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So no. I'll just no, yeah, it's, it's, it's giving you uh, a message here um, that you're about to do something dumb. So I, I just, it's lovely, I got two sides. Yeah, you can move them around. You can yeah. get them out of the way. Yeah. But don't delete them. Don't delete them. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the two songs are tied together in, in iTunes. Yeah. Uh, the ACC version. Yeah. Okay, and then you told it, well, make, make an MP3 version. Um, um, and so it was compressed, but they're still talking to one another, saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And by the way, um, iTunes um, um, knows that you made that second version. It knows that, you know, way off in that server somewhere, that you made a second version. And you may not be able to move it to anybody else's iPod. Right? That's why they do that. Oh, okay. When I go to YouTube to learn something, or even, you know, the Yeah. I find that I minimize it, and I'm listening to you, trying to do what you say doing. Then I have to open it again, pause, and catch up with everything, minimize it, yeah. listen, and... How can I get around that? Because this is where I go wrong, and I go, "No, I can't do that." Um, what you want? Uh, let's let's just say we were talking about Notepad, and you're listening to, uh, and you're watching yeah, the video. Okay, what you want to do is you want to op open Notepad up, so and and then minimize it to the to the taskbar. Now you open up YouTube. Okay, start li start watching the video. Okay, when you get to a place where you want to try something, then don't, don't minimize it, just stop it. Press the stop button, stop it, bring, bring up a notepad from the taskbar, bring it up, do what you just saw. Oh, see, I'm doing it the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. do what you just saw, and then minimize it. And there is YouTube still staring you in the face. Click the play button and goes on to the next bit. So you want to have YouTube open all the way and then use the task bar to bring the application up into your face and then down out of the way so you can see the next bit of the video. That's a good way to learn. You couldn't do that on a split screen. Um, you, you can make an awful mess trying to. Uh, yeah, you you could make an awful mess trying to do it on a split screen uh, because what you've got to do is you've got to do shake. All right, so you you uh, open up a YouTube video and you uh, you give your um, uh, Internet Explorer and it goes to half screen, and then you open up another application, give shake, and it goes to half screen. You can get yourself into some messes there. Just get the whole thing going in full screen and in and out through task manager. It's simple enough because all you got to do is if, if you want if you want to open or if you want to um, okay there is um, there's the browser open okay but what I can do is I can click on this and it goes back it's still open but it's down in the in the taskbar okay so I can have my YouTube open here, and I can open this in front of it, make the changes that I saw, bring it back down again into the taskbar, and there's my YouTube video still there. The other way to do it is to use um, what James um, showed you a long time ago, is to use desktops. Okay? So you can, you can open a YouTube video in this desktop, and then open your application in another desktop and just pop back and forth between them. Okay, but this, if if you're, if you don't want to get into that rabbit hole, just bringing them in and out with taskbar is the way to do it. Okay. Uh, the only uh, caveat to that is that if you make a YouTube video full screen, okay. It will dump over and block the taskbar. 
So you're, you're sort of st stuck with looking at the video in its original form, not full screen. Okay, you can, you can go back and forth out of full screen or not, but um, that's the one caveat, is if you make it go full screen, you're gonna lose the taskbar. Yeah, the other thing that you can do is use Alt-Tab, okay? So let us just say that you've, you've got a video running in full screen, okay? If you hold down the Alt button and click on Tab, Look what it shows you. It shows you what whatever program is open. All right. And if you if you um, if you just uh, release Alt, that program comes up. Uh, let me just uh, let me just try something else here. I'm going to open LibreOffice again. Okay. Um, so I've got LibreOffice open, and I've got. Um, uh, a uh, Microsoft Edge browser window open. Alt tab shows me that I've got Edge open and I've got um, LibreOffice open. But look around, look around the border of the Edge there, and it's it's showing it to you in white. That means that that's the one that's going to open. If I click on tab again, it moves over to that one. That's the one that's going to open, right? Boom! There it is. Alt tab, tab again, tab again. Okay, that's the one that's going to open. Yeah. Oh, you mean you mean the this one here, LibreOffice? No, over here, on the, right, right by your finger, right by your finger, on the yeah there, that, that little screen. Oh, yeah, that's that's uh, making another desktop. Yeah, well, th this is the task view, okay? Yeah. So it, 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 uh, it pulls the windows off, and then you can just click on the one you want to see. Yeah. Um, but Alt-Tab is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So it's, it's a really interesting uh, and useful... Um, way to go when you when you want to have two or three or four windows open that you're working on things uh, you're trying to learn something out of this and move it over to that and blah 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 and and the copy paste function works across alt tab so if you copy something from one document and you alt tab to another document you can paste it in just you know with the control v it uh it's works across documents in Alt-Tab. All right, that's it. That's our hour, folk. It went uh, by pretty quick. I'm glad the internet was down. That was a good session. Yeah. yeah. yeah but there's lots of stuff in there that we can play with. <laughs> there is, too. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.